Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, I restored the save and we are going to try and go to our Titan Shot mission again after people suggested. I had forgotten, you guys had suggested this before, I know, in the comments when a previous mission was lost due to explosion. But I guess it's this ignore max temperature thing. So we're going to activate that for now and then turn to the mission. Interestingly enough, uh, restoring this save, uh, it got rid of my alarms here uh, but and that would be a severe problem because we've got a lot of missions that I need the alarms for but when I go to the tracking station as I'm doing now you can see suddenly curb alarm clock pops up with all the other alarms uh, which is what we need I mean it would be really horrible to lose track of all these missions otherwise right um, we really need to know when we need to do all these things we've got all these missions underway one reason I haven't added uh, RSS Extra Solar, by the way, which adds a lot of other moons to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus in particular, as well as asteroids, is because we've got all these missions on their way. I, I, I might be tempted to add RSS Extra Solar and get rid of the asteroid. Uh, see, the problem is that uh, RSS Extra Solar tries to flatten the solar system, right? And that will throw everything off. But if I just have it not flatten the solar system but also get rid of the asteroids because then they're going to be in the wrong place if I don't flatten the solar system um, and just have the moons of Jupiter, Saturn and all that the pack adds the moons of those planets are oriented with respect to those planets so that should be alright but that's something I'm going to have to test out and I'll have to back stuff up and make sure that doesn't mess everything up so that's a uh, dodgy business, but as we're doing all these missions, uh, it occurred to me, with, especially with the recent demise of Cassini, that uh, we might want some of those other moons, right? Uh, so that when we do our missions in the Voyager window, our probes can visit all those moons. So that's a complicated business, though. For now, um, while Map Set 2 is being completed, I would like to try this uh, Titan shot again. So let's go to that probe and see what happens. And I deliberately started recording ahead of it so that I could catch the explosion if that happens. Uh, let's just verify. We've got ignore max temperature on. Okay, let's go to it. Might have worked this time anyway. But then uh, we are approaching Saturn and we will need to do some things. But uh, we don't need to necessarily... Um, finish the Saturn stuff because it's not going to be getting to periapsis for a little while so most of our focus in this episode is going to be on the Ganymede lander so as I understand it the reason that we need to do this ignore max temperature thing is the accumulated heat from the RTGs um, the heat from the RTGs uh, gets all applied at once and then the thing explodes maybe a different way of uh, having RTG heat applied would be advisable but anyway here we are um, okay it's intact alright so now that it's loaded I can undo the ignore max temperature thing right okay so we're all clear as far as the cheats are concerned okay uh, this was just a dummy maneuver as we entered SOI and see what we needed to do at Saturn and since we're on RTG power we don't need to worry about orientation with respect to the Sun so let's time warp. I uh, decided to go with a slightly higher resolution so that's why these windows are in a different position okay so we are in Saturn SOI and actually that maneuver is well within it but the question is what do we want to do with this uh, it doesn't look like this is the one that was poised for actually meeting up with Titan. I think that was the other one, but we don't have any other mission here. So if we could actually rendezvous with Titan at all and finagle that, that would be beneficial. We might as well try, because this has a lander sort of thing, doesn't it? Or... no... Oh, yeah, it does. It's got this little guy here. And so this guy is supposed to plunge into the atmosphere of Titan, and it's got a little parachute there. I got a new mouse, but uh, that sometimes doesn't help with right-clicking on these things. But yeah, there's a parachute there. Okay, so everything... Yeah, let, let me uh, 
try and get this on a Titan rendezvous. If that's not possible, I guess we'll try and plunge this into Saturn itself, maybe. It's got a little heat shield. Who knows? Well, as far as the Saturn system goes, it seems like we have a fair number of moons to work with. We've got Enceladus, we've got uh, Tethys, Dion, Mimas, Titan, Iapetus, but we aren't exactly in the right plane to deal with them right now. We're sort of uh, inclined, and it's not very... Con okay, it's calculating something or another, and not very conveniently inclined right now. We can make orbit, that's not a problem. It's uh, making a good orbit to meet up with any of these moons is the issue right now. And, yeah, I mean, I guess the best thing to do would be to sort of make a... Right now, our, um, what you got? Ascending and descending node are right here. You can see where it crosses the plane of all of these moons is right there. And so that's pretty close to Saturn. Not a very good place to fix things right now. Uh, we could get into orbit first and then try and do something or another. Maybe meet one of the moons at, uh, maybe if we could, like, hit Mimas at the ascending or descending node, well, descending node, it looks like. That could be okay. But that might take some doing. Let's see. Um, okay, right there, huh? And so... This is probably really sensitive to the timing. It's not going to show me. Uh, okay. Why don't we keep it loose first and then later on come in? Or if that's the node, maybe Enceladus would be a better target. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should just wait. I mean, that's what uh, many year missions are for, right? Uh, so we'll we'll keep that and then we'll have it there and then at Apoapsis, we can do a minor adjustment to sort of meet up with Enceladus. Maybe Enceladus will give a minor adjustment to our orbit uh, to help us flatten out, and then we'll work on that. This will have to be uh, sort of a Cassini-like in the way it approaches the moons repeatedly and uh, adjusts its orbit by using the moons. I think that's the basic idea. But right now, we're going to focus on capturing first. Um, meeting up with Titan to help us at all right now is not doable. I don't know if Titan is really that influential as far out as it is. We'll see. The other mission I think is aiming right for Titan anyway. We will still aim to send this to Titan at some point, but we can't meet up with it right away. So let's add this alarm. Fortunately, we don't have any sort of uh, contract with a time limit on it, so we can take our time with trying to get this over there. If it turns out that the other probe uh, takes care of Titan, we can send this to some other moon, like Enceladus. I mean, as far as the little lander is concerned. But we have to watch out, because, I mean, we've got a lot of fuel here, and we can't really use the lander until we've used up all this fuel. So... Right now, we've got like 3,600 delta V in that tank. We're only going to be using 1,341 to make orbit. So, yeah, it'd be a shame to deploy the lander before we absolutely need to. So we'll have to see about that. Anyway, so that's what's going on in my head. Uh, let's go on to the next mission that we need, need to deal with, which is the Ganymede lander. Okay, here we are with our Ganymede lander, and I did turn on ignore max temperature there, so there we go. And I figured out what was happening in the in the space center screen with the alarm clock. I, I had never pressed this minimize maximize button before, but apparently it had been minimized, so that's why we weren't getting all the alarms, so no crisis there. And we are ready to go, I think. So, without further ado, we just need to time warp around Jupiter and meet up with Ganymede. Uh, let's just check our life support situation. Where did my life support information go? Okay, um, 35 days food, 43 days oxygen at Spaceport 2. That's our Earth orbit station. 
so not a huge problem. I think we can do the whole landing thing, assuming that works, uh, in time. So let's go. Okay, and then we have to keep track of how our communication is going and to make sure that Ganymede is not going to block our communication as we try and make orbit. Very important. So we have to pass by on the side that will not block communication. Oops, I think I got rid of an extra alarm. We'll have to add that one back in. That's for the other Titan shot. Okay, so as we can... Oh, wait. Which way is the line really going? See, that's that, 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 that direction is definitely not where the line is going. It's actually going this way. Why, why does remote tech have to fool with me like that? Anyway, so it's going this way. And so we should be passing on the correct side of Ganymede to maintain communication. It'll keep going this way. Uh, eventually at periapsis we'll lose communication. Um, but we should be able to make orbit pretty quickly. And let's aim for a tight orbit. Because we have to make a landing. Alright. Looks good to me. I probably should have done some science though. Hmm. Maybe we can still get away with some science. Um, not range safety. Analyze telemetry. I don't know if this will be high over Ganymede or not. Log radiation data. Record perturbation data. I mean, by the time it actually gets done. Log temperature. Log pressure. There's Ganymede. Looking good, actually. I'm keeping the alarm clock up to remind me that I've accidentally gotten rid of one alarm that I shouldn't have gotten rid of, so that's why it's still up there. Making orbit around one of Jupiter's moons. And so our landing location will be somewhere on this side as well to maintain communication. Obviously this section doesn't have any communication ability at all. Barely has any electric charge. Well, it does have the two RTGs though, so it'll, it'll maintain power. And it does have a tiny bit of omni range there. I guess for future missions to Ganymede, it might be some help, but not much. Not until we put a permanent orbiter instead of this lander. We have no lander legs, we are going to be landing directly on this tank. Inclination 45 degrees. We're still waiting on the science that we already queued up. I could leave it high on the apoapsis so that we get some high science for sure. Let me do the log data stuff right now. I think we might just start off with this thing. What, what we could do is maybe start off our descent with this. I don't know if that would help us keep enough fuels to get this back into orbit. I doubt it, but you never know. Okay, so we've got an orbit uh, 488 by 99, and actually the place that we have 99 is not where we want to land, so we're going to have to bring that apoapsis down. Oop, it's deciding whether or not to keep me in orbit here. <laughs> okay, uh, so we actually want to land on this side here, not uh, over there. That'll be probably blocked. But anyway, let's time warp and get the science. Okay, here we go. Wow, telemetry analysis, 67.5. Above Midlands, gravity scan, 75, but we have to wait for that other data to upload, otherwise we might accidentally not transmit the science we need. Okay, atmospheric pressure scan, 90. I don't know, I thought I had already done telemetry analysis, but maybe I sent a different one ahead. But this is all dependent on the surface biome. And this is just above, so we're going to get low stuff, but... That's interesting because that means there's a, there's a lot. Of, that means there's a lot of science to be gotten from 
from these moons. Lots and lots. Again, I'm, I'm not trying to milk the science. So if you're going like, but you're missing all the biomes. Well, I, I want to send other missions here too. I don't want to get all the science with this mission and then never send another mission to Ganymede or anything. That's not the purpose here. Okay, there's a second set though. Um, that one we've done. We're still over to Midlands. Atmospheric pressure scan. For some reason, for some reason it thought that we hadn't done the Midlands for gravity scan. Anyway, we have to wait for a connection. Thought we had done these over the Midlands, but so now we have to make a decision whether to use this stage or not. And the question is, do we have the thrust weight ratio on this stage to handle things around Ganymede? Or did I expect to have to burn some stuff off? It looks all right, 2.56, and this should be Ganymede centric right now. And so if we use all this fuel up to descend and then go to that stage, it's possible that that stage can make orbit again, maybe. It'll be tight though. We'll have to see, but it's not like we have to land at a particular location. Some of that fuel will have to be used for RCS though, and these are tiny RCS ports. I hope they're powerful enough. And we have to remember staging. Hmm. Well, that's the thing. We're gonna have half, like more than half an hour between the finish of this stage and the start of that stage. By that time, we'll have crashed into the surface, right? So, rat's not good at all. We'll have to plan the whole thing, we'll have to plan the staging out ahead of time. We are, uh, this is a bad idea, okay. Uh, I think I should have five at this point. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is half an hour before we do it, I stage through, which means I'll press spacebar a few times. And the, but that's way before we start our burn. Hmm. I think I want to land over here. This this little splotch seems like a good place to land, huh? Thirty four minutes. Uh, I think we can do it now. Let me F five. F five. Okay, and we'll need this up, because I need to know when the staging is going to happen. Oh, look, we've got all sorts of other things that are going to happen. Um, right. So, let's add a few things to that. I'm going to say stage, stage, stage. I want more just in case, because it's not like, we, we, we don't have any spare stages, stage. All right. And then this stage is 3 minutes and 12 seconds. So before that gets to 3 minutes and 12 seconds, we better finish this stage up. I mean, we better start that stage up, and then we'll be finished by the time we get to that staging event. One way or another, we'll land wherever that is. Okay, so that's the plan. Time to bring surface info up. That's less science than I thought I was going to get. I thought we had like 700 science in the bank already. Oh, that looks like horrible terrain. You didn't tell me you were going to be horrible terrain over here. Oh, shucks. Of all the places in all of Ganymede, it had to be this. Okay. Okay, uh, fuel settle. Ignition. Okay, Midlands. I thought I had transmitted this before. Just saying, Kerbal. I'm going to deliberately wait until that one finishes transmitting and check whether we get the science or not. It totally didn't give me the science. It totally didn't give me the science. Which I don't, I don't know what that says about our ability to complete this mission. 
Well, that one gave us science. Okay, so it's completely random. <laughs> sometimes we'll get the science, sometimes we won't. Just deal with it. Well, I'm gonna give the Analyze Telemetry command. And if that works, we'll already be landed at that point. I uh, would like to be tending upward as we let go of the previous stage, just to be safe. No, well, not quite, but... Okay, let's see if this works out. Okay, we have good ignition. Just above Ganymede's cryovolcanic ice. Is that what this is? Well, that's that's good. Seems like an interesting biome. So we're sort of going for that spot. Not really that area. But you really want to land in the cryovolcano? Maybe. Maybe that'd be the best way to go. It's possible we could do a hop. We might not be able to get back into orbit again with the fuel remaining, but we could potentially hop to somewhere else. And land somewhere else. Wait, where was I trying to land again? I swear it changed colors on me. Thought, thought I was supposed to be landing over here, but... Not quite aimed as much as I would like. This actually has a reaction wheel on it. We don't really need RCS to orient us, but better not turn it off. I suppose we could land here too. I mean, at the top of the place it shouldn't be too bumpy, right? It looks reasonably flat kind of thing. I'd rather not hit those slopes. Okay, now I'm going to orient to the surface, let's say 300, pitch 80, execute. Seems good. On the bright side, this is unlikely to tip over. That's not a problem I'm worried about. Okay, so that's very low horizontal speed right there. So if we just pitch straight up and down, we should be good, right? That's a theory for us. Nice vantage point, if we could take pictures. This doesn't have an orbital telescope or anything on it. Someday we'll have to send something that can take pictures. But that day is not today. I'm using the RCS in translational mode to get rid of some of the surface horizontal speed while I'm staying perfectly vertical. Obviously not taking any chances here. And there we go. Everything off. Alright, we are on the surface. Take that, Kerbal Space Program. And <laughs> uh, okay, so we just need to do the telemetry analysis, which will happen when? In 23 minutes. Okay. Ooh, hop. And looks like from the surface, all right. Okay. Um, transmit. 135 science. Mm, says done but it doesn't say that we've done it here landed telemetry analysis let me try it again maybe it'll get it on the second try K atmospheric pressure scan let's see if we get signs for these Science added. When, when we get science, it says science added. That one says it's done, but it didn't add any science. 
K. Nasty business. So if this one says doesn't say science added, then maybe the next one, which is uh, analyze telemetry, which is what we actually need, will say science added. I don't know. Maybe it's a 50-50 thing. Got better hypothesis? Okay, so that one says done, which means it didn't add the science. No, no science was added. Now let's focus on our contract. Or maybe time warping resets the thing. You never know. I think it's probably going to be universal that if for some reason it's not going to let us complete the contract like this, um, people will ask me to just force complete the contract. But we also want the science, right? So hopefully we can just get it done normally. No, that just says done again. Let me let me give it. Uh, let me try a different experiment. Uh, one that did not. Uh, let me just go through them and then have it do the analyze telemetry again. And I don't know. One more try. I know one of these other ones we've also missed. So. Maybe we need to warm up the whole thing. Okay, that one's been done. Okay, this one had not been. Let's get that science. Now, if that one doesn't get us, okay, that one didn't get a science. Let's transmit the telemetry analysis now. Or maybe it's particular to the instrument, I don't know. I don't think so though. I think uh, one time it had missed one and then it subsequently transmitted properly after that. Okay, well maybe it's just particular to certain instruments because those all didn't work again. I think at this point I've had enough. I, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I've completed the contract. I've done what I was supposed to do. I'm not going to get the science that I was supposed to, but uh, I got some science anyway. Let's uh, let's see. Com is complete, right? Uncrewed Gammy contract. I think you guys will agree that I've completed this, so I'm going to complete this. Okay. And we got our completion rewards and some extra signs. So I guess it, it made up for it. Oh no, that's prestige. Sorry. Escape the gravitational influence of Jupiter. We got some science for that. Okay. All right, we did this. Um, uh, let me get that Titan shot alarm back up for the other mission, and then maybe we'll end by resupplying our station. Okay, here we are with our spaceport resupply. We are all lined up. This rocket is a Nico 400X, which means it's got four of the NK-15, NK-33 engines and a single J2 engine, but that will be lit in flight. Obviously, it's not very efficient on the ground here. And actually, we are recovering the boosters. They've got parachutes, so that's how it is there. And ideally, they would have floats on this bottom side. They've got the parachutes on the top, and they ought to have like floats on the bottom to really, well, I don't know. Somebody ought to write a book on the dynamics of recovering boosters in water. We'll save that for some other time. Okay, so SAS on, throttle is up, everything looks good, ignition. And launch. And it's going up with gusto, so that's good. Lots of thrust to wait here. Well, excellent power so far with this rocket. Let's light the J-2. We're at a fine altitude for it. No reason not to, and I'll make it have better thrust-to-weight ratio when the boosters separate. Going at 4 Gs now. We could throttle down the booster engines, of course, but without any crew, once again, don't see any particular reason to. Oh, okay, it's getting a little bit high. I, I'm worried about heat effects and stuff 
40 kilometers. I don't know, it's still possible. We're gonna separate them soon anyway, it'll be fine. Oh, there. And separate. Oh, that's not good. That tank. That tank. Okay, so heat was a problem with that one tank. Not too sure why it was that tank rather than any other tank, but... Well... This it was, our resupply vessel was very simple. It's just a resupply vessel. Very familiar. You've seen the basic type before. Um... These don't gimbal, so... But that's not enough anything to get anywhere, so... Yep. Well, that's a bust. But that's alright, we have another one. Uh, we actually have a moon port resupply? Yeah, we have a spare moon port resupply. So I guess we'll use that to resupply the station around the Earth. It's a little bit of a waste, but at least it's reliable. Maybe we should just build one more of these. I wonder how long it takes to build one. Uh, we've got 24 days worth of food there, and... Oh, yeah, and then we've got to refocus on the Titan shot in four days. I'd rather just get the mission off, and so I don't have to worry about them. We're not building anything in the VAB, so I'll queue up more resupply vessels so that they're ready for the next time we need them. Alright, uh, well... You'll have to forgive me, I'm not going to show you the explosion of this, I'm just going to go to the VAB now and continue on with things. Alright, let's try this again. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Alright, booster separation. And that's fine. I didn't get any messages indicating the recovery of boosters from the other rocket. So maybe these boosters aren't going to get recovered either, we'll see. Okay, separation. And ignition. And fairing separation. Relative inclination is good, but we've got a long distance to target. Um, basically, it's on the other side of the planet from us. So we're going to have to take some time phasing with it. Okay, I am going to plan to dispose of the J2 stage rather than bring it into orbit. Don't really need it in orbit right now. Shut down. Alright, separation. And ignition. And that'll do. We're in a lower orbit. We'll try and catch up to it. And that shouldn't be too hard. We've got plenty of Delta V. So let me get to work and we should have a quick docking with this. And that'll be that. Okay, we are approaching the station. And I used liberal amounts of Delta V. Oh, the station did the flippy thing. That's very annoying. Um, yeah. Liberal amounts of Delta V to ensure that we could rendezvous quickly and not interfere with the Titan shot, which uh, we have to take care of in two days one of the two Titan shots. I really need to rename them so that we can distinguish between the two. But anyway, um, let's use the little engines here. Okay, and that is an Apollo docking system right there. I just want to make this very simple. So let me dock there and we will control from the Apollo docking system on this side, which means everything is flipped around. Retract our panels so that doesn't bump into anything. 
and negative parallel. I don't know, this is some weird panels going around there. Maybe I should just dock on this one over here. Because you can see there's some panels sticking out here, there, there, small ones. Those should all really be retracted. Well, we'll get closer and see if those really present a hazard to us. Okay, yeah, those solar panels, especially those RCS booms, really need to get retracted. That's not very helpful. I think we can sneak in here. Okay, well, uh, sort of a touchy business, this approach. None of the antennae seem to be at risk of snapping. And let's have that off. All right, it is docked. Everything seems to be good. Uh, the actual quantities of oxygen and food are readjusting themselves as usual. But it looks like now with this resupply, we're going to have 286 days of food, 280, 295 days of oxygen and possibly some extra water. Water is actually going up here. Um, yeah. Do we have a water recycling unit here or is it just a fuel cell? Might just be the fuel cell. Okay, and let's let's do the solar panel retractions here. Um, okay, why can't I retract that? Oh, these don't retract, that's why. Okay, well, that's a mild design flaw. No, that's not the reason why. Because the RCS extendable quad booms definitely can retract. Oh, and there's uh, the old Spaceport 1 is what it is. Remember the gap there? So that's that's all sorts of problems, really. Okay, well, at least we've got this resupplied. And I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with the control here. We've got, we've got the electric charge. It's still trying to adjust the f food and oxygen quantities. And the water is still going up. We need a water splitter just to get some more oxygen here instead of having so much water. But anyway, uh, we'll leave everything else for another day. The next thing we need to deal with is those two Titan shot missions. And so that will be fine. And then, uh, yep, we will see what we do after that. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.